Hi everyone, it's Abe from McPay Photography. I'm just going to show you how to install and use luminosity masks the easy way. Now, I've used luminosity masks in quite a few tutorials recently and people have said they've not really known where to get them and find them. And we'll just show you the process of installing them. I've already got them installed, so I can't do the full thing, but I can show you the steps. And then we'll just have a play with them with this picture of um, lovely lobster dish from Stockdale's in Leeds. So let me just shrink me down a little bit, hopefully. Excellent. Luminosity masks. In the old days, we used to do them by using channels and intersections and weird things like that. But now we can use what's called extensions. So if you've got the latest Photoshop or just CC generally, find extensions on Exchange. Those are the ones I've already got installed. And find extensions on Exchange. This will open up a browser. So you will have to be logged in. I'm logged in already, which um, saves a bit of a job. And you've got literally hundreds of things you can find on here. So what I'm going to do is type in loom in O S I T Y. Oh, L U very rare. I get it. Spell it right. You put a C instead of an S luminosity mask, and then you can hit enter or click on the micro uh, magnifying glass and it pops these different options. You'll see this one's free, 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 free and then you've got some paid ones down here which I've not tried but the one I've been using for some time is this one called a luminosity masking panel by Greg Benz okay because it's simple and it just works okay click on there and it says extension acquired I've already got it but for you you can probably I've forgotten the actual process I think there's a button where you just say acquire or get this and as part of your creative crowd install it will just install it into your Photoshop so if we go back you'll see when you go back up to your window and then extensions if you click on the luminosity masks it's a very uninspiring thing that happens really you get this little box little panel opening up and it's got three buttons one is create masks which creates the masks, and two is clean up, which gets rid of the masks, which you always want to do at the end of any work you're doing because these masks make your files massive. They'll be over a gigabyte in size if you don't delete them, and it'll soon eat up your hard drive. Right, so let's show you what happens when you click on it. So create masks. Again, a little progress bar happens, and then it says channel masks have been created. Bing, that's done. So you click OK on that. If you open your channels panel up, if you can't find your channels panel, you go to window and navigate down to channels there and click on that and it'll open up. And what you'll find is you've got your normal red, green, and blue ones, and then you've got lights one to five, darks one to five, midtones one to five, and then light and midtones one to four. So what's that? Five, ten, fifteen, nineteen channels so what i hear you cry well let's have a little look at what these do can you see I don't know if we zoom in no you can't really what happens is if you press your control key and click on one of these it makes a selection can you, can you see the dancing ants around that so on lights five it's selecting the very brightest parts of the photo on lights four i've got my finger on the control key click on number four see it's just around the edge of this plate now and just on the tops of those bits of food. So that's where the lights really caught it. And then if we go to lights three, it'll select a bit more. So it's a lot, lot more of the bright areas. Number two, it's selected quite a lot of the plate now. And number one, yeah, just even got the bright bits of the table, all this area down here. So we're, we're just being enabled to select bits of the photo based on how bright they are. So if we go for the darks, you can see if you click on the darks down here, it's this blacky sort of look on the um, knife and the shadow below it. Two, a little bit more. One, lots of it. Okay, now let's see one in action. What we want to do is use curves, our curves panel, to let me get rid of these existing. We want to use the curves adjustment layer to darken the dark areas. So it gives it a little bit more punch and gravity. So what we'll do, I'll press Control D to deselect it. So I want to, I want to maybe just try this one, maybe. So all the areas that are highlighted there, I want to darken. So we've got them selected. 
we can now darken them by going to a curves adjustment layer. You get to the curves adjustment layer by clicking on this thing here and going curves. This creates a brand new layer. And if you can see the mask is mainly black with a few little white bits on it. And that's what was selected. So the whole point of the luminosity mask is we now create a curves layer where only that bit is selected. Now, if we get hold of the curve, you can see if we go up, we make everything brighter. If we go down, look at that. It's just giving it a little bit more punch. Now, just to see the effects of that more effectively, we just toggle the layer on and off by clicking its eye. There you go. And now if you wanted to just do the really, really dark bits and make them darker, again, you can just click uh, control and click on the darks. So this is an even darker selection. Curves again. See in the, the, um, the histogram here showing it's only just got this tiny bit selected now. So you can see it's not really affecting much, is it? Well, if you put it all the way to the top like that, it brings it, yeah, it makes it a bit more insipid. So, so if you want to make those areas a little bit darker like that, that's cool. Right, okay, so we've, we've given it a bit of darkness there. Let's have a look at the dish itself. So looking down these masks here, if you want to show what they are, just, just control key, click. I'm going to do this, the brightest one, and then go for curves layer. And now you can see it's selected quite a lot there. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit, and that'll brighten up the bright bits but notice how it's not really affecting how dark these dark areas are it's just leaving those alone and lightening the bright bits so it's lightening the paint plate up a bit that sort of thing um, and then the midtones so obviously this is going to select a hell of a lot of it actually so we can do curves there or, or you want to darken it down a little bit so it's leaving the very brightest bits and the very darkest bits alone and just affecting those middle bits. Okay, right, I think the bright, the very bright bits now have got a little bit away from us. So what I might want to do is drag them back. So I'm going to click maybe on this one here. So it's got quite a lot selected. And then with the curves, we can just pull those back a little bit. So essentially what we've done there, we've just clicked five times, created five of these um, curves layers and use the masks so we can select different bits. And then if you wanted to, you can then start um, sharpening and things like that. But this just enables you to control the bright bits and the dark bits and all that sort of thing. There you go, that's really how luminosity masks work. Quite a cool tool to use. And I would strongly recommend having a go with them. It's free to use and it's well worth a try. So. Hope that's a useful bit of tutorial there for you. Thanks for watching.